Our final section contains the task a production administrator occasionally performs. This includes setting up environment extensions, document tracking, component locking, and it ends with process deactivation. Both developers and administrators use extensions in their environment, so let's begin by defining an extension. Extensions allow the same process to run in different environments with different environment-specific configurations. It allows you to define certain configuration settings within your process, such as the connection information to be specified at the deploy time instead of the build time. With extensions, you can develop a single process but specify different settings for each location when deploying the process to multiple atoms or environments. Process extensions are defined within the process component. You can define extensions for connections, trading partners, dynamic process properties, process properties, maps, cross-reference tables, and PGP certificates. Now that we understand what extensions are, let's define the reasons why we want to use them. Multiple environments. The most common reason involves connection information and having many environments. In more formal development life cycles, there are often many instances of the application to connect to, such as test and production instances. For example, assume you have a process connecting to a database server. The test and the production instances of the database server probably have different host names, usernames, passwords, and maybe even ports. Within the process, you can define the varied environment settings as extensions, and then provide the test credentials when deploying to the test environment and the production credentials when deploying to the production environment. Integration packs are packaged integration solutions. Each deployed integration pack has its own connection information and process property values. You can define extensions for this information in the underlying process configuration to enable integration pack users to customize the packaged processes for their needs by setting up extension values. Now you can optionally configure extension packs to allow many installs by enabling users to use the same processes with different extension values. Integration packs are going to be part of our new Administrator 2 class. Extensions are defined per process from the Build tab in the Extensions link at the top of the Process Canvas or in Atom Management under Environment Properties view. If a common component, such as a connection, is referenced by multiple processes, each process must extend the component. This is a little different from shared components, so it's easy to miss. The process must be deployed before the extension values are overwritten in Atom Management. Once an extension is overwritten, the other processes with the same extension in the same environment will automatically use the value. Finally, extensions can also be set in test mode per process per atom. To create an extension, first, you must set up the extension by enabling the extensions and defining the extendable components within your process. Next, you must package the components and deploy the process to the process environment. And finally, configure the environment extensions. When configuring process extensions, we have a few best practices for you to consider. First, set the default connection information to use the test logins. Test connectivity to each application in test mode before process deployment. And finally, deploy the process to each environment with connectors and extensions enabled before developing an end-to-end -end solution. So what we're going to do now is exercise number 19, 
we're going to do extensions. Now this begins on page 81 and it goes up to page 90 in your book. We are going to be downloading a process from the process library. Before we do that, we do need to create a folder to put it in. So we'll click on new folder. So we're calling our folder extension example. We click on the save button. Click on the browse process library button. Once again, because we begin with I for admin, we're going to search by process name. And here, if you scroll down a little bit, you will find admin one extension example. We're going to click on the install button. It's going to ask us where we want to place this. We're going to have it go into our extension example folder. And we're going to come down and press the install button. Close. And if I open up my extension example, I will see that it's populated and I have my admin one. So now we have our admin one extension example. We're going to click on the extensions hyperlink. The process has one connection component, which is a database. So it is the only connection that's available in the dropdown. If we had multiple, then we would have multiple listed here and we could choose which one we want. We also have quite a number of different things we can do for the connection, but the three that we're interested in is the user, the password, and the database name. So at this time, we're going to make sure that they are checked off and click the OK button. We're going to run this in the test environment. When I click on test, I will select my atom, which is going to be the test atom cloud. But instead of running it, what I'm going to do is populate these extension values. So we're going to populate the org track connection, and instead of using the defaults, which are the ones that are in the connection itself, what we're going to do is uncheck them, and we're going to use org track dev for each of them. And the dev needs to be uppercase, so it needs to be spelled just like it. And that's also going to be our user, and it's going to be our password, so you can just copy and paste. And it's also going to be the database name. So when I run a test, it's going to go in and try to log in to OrgTrackDev. And we do have a database out there called OrgTrackDev with those usernames and passwords, so therefore it can log in. All right, so therefore it is successful. It has logged the information into the database. There's not much going on here. It's just logging in a name, and that is it. Now, one of the questions I usually get is, well, you know, how do we know that really worked? Okay, so if I decide I want to run it again, and I change this, maybe instead of it being a user, I'll populate this with an org track div one, and I go to run it, what you're going to see is that there is not going to be an org track div one. So it is actually looking at those extensions for their values. All right, so notice that we do have an error message. It says the extension example completed with errors. It could not access user, it, the access was denied for user org track dev one. So it is actually reading those values. Well, that works for test. We know that now. So let's take a look at how this would work in production. It is time to package and deploy your process. Your activity guide contains the details you need to enter for package components and deploying your process. The video will continue with the step after your process is deployed. Pause the video now to package and deploy your process. We're gonna highlight our production atom. Now down here at the bottom, where it says administration, notice that we have this thing that says environment extensions. We can click on that. When I choose org track, my values come up. I can use the defaults or just like I did when I was running in the test environment, I can actually override these. So I'm gonna change this and run off of a different database. This is gonna be called org track prod. This is the user, the database, and the password. If 
I'm going to go into process reporting and I'm just going to execute it. My extension example. We'll give it a moment. Notice that this ran. I have a no data start shape. This is the name of the connection, which is going into the org track prod. Now you could be saying to yourself, well, how do we know that that actually worked? So let's go back. Let's go into our production environment and let's change the environment extension. So what we're going to do is what we did in test. We're going to just put a one on the end. So you can see that it's truly looking at these values. We'll come over into process reporting. We'll execute it. I'm going to click on the refresh button. Now notice that it failed. The reason why it failed was that there was an access denied for org track prod one. So it's act, it is looking at those values. It's your turn now to do exercise number 19, Extensions, which is in your book on page 81 to 90. When we return, we will be taking a look at document tracking.